now that the entire city was almost built people started living in the city so a permanent source of food was now required to sustain the entire population so the mayor set up a number of canteens in various parts of the city which provided the people with food similarly plants have such canteen like structures which manufacture food and these canteen like structures are known as chloroplast chloro means green and plast means who form so what gives the chloroplast this green color well there is a pigment present inside the chloroplast which is known as the chlorophyll this chlorophyll is green in color and that is why even the chloroplasts are green colored these chloroplasts are found in abundance in green leaves the chlorophyll present inside the chloroplast absorb sunlight and together with carbon dioxide and water manufacture food by the process of photosynthesis so do the leaf cells carry only chloroplasts let us see there are a large number of cells in the leaf now let us focus on one cell yes you see abundant of chloroplasts present in the leaf cell but what are these white structures and these colorful red structures present in the leaf cell well these are known as the chromoplasts and the leucoplasts the white structures are known as the leucoplasts the red colorful structures are known as chromoplasts now let us study further about the leucoplasts your mother cooks food for you every morning now what if she cooks some extra one day will she throw away the extra food no she won't she'll store the excess food in the refrigerator for future use similarly all plant cells manufacture food by the process of photosynthesis now the extra food that is present uh, in the plant gets stored in organelles known as the leucoplasts leuco means white or colorless so leucoplasts are organelles present in the plant cells that store these excess food potatoes something that you all love now can you tell me why potato slices have a white appearance well that is because potatoes have an abundance of leucoplasts that store starch in them now you can uh, carry a simple experiment just take a potato slice stain it with iodine which is specific for the starch granules present inside the leucoplast and observe it under the microscope this is what you see you see purple granules of starch and this proves that potatoes have an abundance of leucoplasts in their cells now have you seen an unripe tomato on the plant well if you have you'll see that they are green in color very different from the red tomatoes that you have in your salads now why does the color of the tomato change from green to red this is because of the progressive decrease in the number of chloroplasts and the progressive increase in the number of chromoplasts so the green color decreases and gives way to the more prominent red color so what are these chromoplasts well chromoplasts are organelles present in the plant cells that have many bright pigments inside them so chromoplasts are organelles that give the plant different colors except green now see 
if you see a rose uh, cell under the microscope, you will find a lot of chromoplasts carrying a bright red pigment. And this pigment is giving the rose this bright red color. So the two most common pigments that are present inside the chromoplasts are xanthophyll and carotene. Xanthophyll is responsible for the yellow color of bell peppers and carotene gives the bright orange color in carrots. So we've talked about the chloroplasts, the leucoplasts, and the chromoplasts. Now notice that all these three structures are double membraned. See, they all have double membranes. Now all these three structures can collectively be called as plastids. So plastids consist of chloroplasts, leucoplasts, and chromoplasts. Now if you've been paying attention, you'll realize that I have just talked about plastids in a plant cell. That is because plastids are present only in the plant cell. Animal cells do not have plastids. This means that plant cell, animal cells do not have chloroplasts in them. So they cannot manufacture food by the process of photosynthesis. That is why we are dependent on plants for food. All animals and all human beings depend on plants for food. Now you can tell me that carnivorous animals are not dependent on plants for food. They have other small herbivorous animals. No, even carnivorous animals are indirectly dependent on plants for food. How? They have small herbivorous animals and these herbivorous animals are dependent on plants for food. So indirectly, even carnivorous animals or human beings who have only flesh and meat are also indirectly dependent on plants for food. <laughs>